Hey, this is Tim Matheson, and you're listening to three of Alan's Flyboy Buddies, Laker Jim, Jake, and Big Bob, on the one and only Fletchcast. Take it away, guys. Broadcasting live, live and around the world. Around the world. From Cabana One, the only podcast that's all ball bearings. Your ultimate source for everything Fletch. Moon River. Thank you, Doc. You ever serve time? Laker Jim and his beat reporters will stop at nothing to make sure Fletch lives forever. Forever. <laughs> they don't shower much. Oh. This is Fletchcast. Thank you, Sammy. So good to hear your voice. Welcome back, Fletch fans. That was your best thank you, Sammy, ever. <laughs> I'm your host, Laker Jim. Joining me are two men that took a break from raising chitlins to be here today, Jake and Big Bob. <laughs> they're mean little animals, but their coats are worth a fortune. <laughs> oh, my God. Lovely to be here. So much going on in our world. I am anxious to hear from the masses. All right, let's get started. Because we're a podcast that's for the fans, by the fans, we wanted to dedicate an episode to you guys, the ones that make this all possible. Well, after all, they are people, aren't they? And as a thank you, especially for voting us into the final slate of the podcast awards. You, the fans, are going to dictate the topics we discuss today. We asked the fans to call in with any Fletch story, question, comment you want, and to sweeten the deal, we got our hands on a Confessed Fletch hat, yes, straight from the set of Confessed Fletch. Yeah, and I'm a little envious because... I was actually looking at this hat, and then Jim texted me and goes, Oh, that, that we're going to give it away. I was like, oh, for God, dog, dog. <laughs> but um, it's worth it. It's worth it because the fans are... Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this giveaway was posted on social media, so if you don't follow us, go to any social media platform right now and follow at I Am Fletchcast so you don't miss out on the next giveaway. Woo-wee! Oh, boy, I lost Sorry. Now, I must say, this Confess hat is beautiful. Beautiful strap back hat. It's tailored to, I guess, look like the hat that John Hamm wears in the movie. And instead of the Laker logo, it's a purple hat with a gold Confess Fletch logo on the front. Never been worn, comes from a smoke free home. <laughs> I love how you threw that out there. So, we're going to pick our favorite voicemail, and they're going to be the first to own a piece of the new movie. Just one piece. Let's not wait any longer. Let's get to the first call. Mm, I'm ready. Hey, guys. Uh, this is Chad from Houston, and uh, my uh, buddy just recently put me onto your podcast, so I'm behind, but I'm catching up quickly and uh, really, really enjoying it. Um, I wanted to share uh, a couple of interesting Fletch-related items to you. Um, I, I was too young to actually see the original in the movie theater, but I did see Fletch live at the theater. Of course, quickly caught up with the regular Fletch and watched it dozens and dozens of times. Um, interesting enough, what I did with it was uh, kind of interesting. Now, keep in mind, I'm a little bit older, and uh, this was a time when there wasn't streaming or uh, movies on demand or anything like that. So what I actually did was I was living in San Antonio at the time, and uh, I would go visit my friends in Austin a lot. And uh, that drive was about an hour and 20 minutes or so, which is coincidentally – about the uh, running time of Fletch. Uh, so what I did actually was hooked up my VCR uh, to my stereo and uh, literally taped the movie onto an audio tape. And if you remember at that time, uh, tapes were in 90 minutes. So 45 minutes on one side, 45 on the other uh, on audio tape. And I would listen to that uh, on my trips from San Antonio to Austin uh, almost every time I would go and every time I would come back. So uh, I've probably maybe listened to the movie more than I've seen it, which is probably not uh, not the best uh, goal to have in life, but that's what I've done. Um, and then another w- really quick one's kind of unusual, but uh, all my friends who also love Fletch, when they came into town uh, for my wedding, uh, they literally went to a Randall Tex Club uh, childhood home in Bridge City, Texas, and drove by. And obviously, he wasn't there, but uh, um, that's how much my my friends enjoy it as well. So we're all big fans and uh, uh, I appreciate it and just love uh, hearing all the stories. So keep it up. Thanks. Bye-bye. Chad, out of the gates with a great first call. So so let's 
let's unpack this. Let's applaud the effort that it took to do this. Just the steps yeah. to do that. Unbelievable. Yeah. Exactly. There was no YouTube. There were no instructions. The guys at Radio Shack couldn't help you. I didn't even think of being that creative when I was that young. Because he had to be a young guy doing that too, right? Yeah. To know what wire to get, what input to put where. Yes. I mean, you had to be Matthew Broderick from War Games, basically, <laughs> I think to correct. create this Fletch audio right. tape. Yeah, you'd have to. And, and let it be known, too, Laker Gym is... Uh, a, a novice, uh, you know, a tech guy like that too. There were many times where we would rent movies, and he had a uh, what was it, a dual head VCR back in the day? <laughs> yeah, the dual deck VCR. Oh yeah. yes, I remember those. That was big money, but it was worth it. Used to be our go-to guy to record things on that we got from uh, <laughs> Palmer, West Coast, or Blockbuster, and throw it on you know our own tape. And the next day, you'd go there, and I'd get my VHS copy of whatever it was. Not going to say. Yeah, yeah. Usually, those movies were behind a curtain. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> in the other room i remember when i was when i was a kid i remember having like the tape recorder and i would tape like tv this was back in the 80s oh, I did that too. yeah i, I used to i used to like record like the theme songs from like you know a team and you know stuff like that tj hooker or whatever but um yeah. to go to that length i think really deserves some type of applause and then the other story yeah. about him going to Randall Tex Cobb's home. I think that's great. I try to do that as well, too, anytime I'm in a town. Feeling a little horny, Ed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for the call, Chad. All right, let's see who's Hey, next. this is William from Tucson, Arizona. I just really enjoyed uh, your new episode and so excited. Um, I think you, you, you don't have a pulse if you're not excited about this, literally, um, a new movie. Um, I was thinking about it a, a couple of years ago, well, more than a few years ago, I did subscribe briefly to Showtime. Um, not one I was particularly excited about, but I was watching a show, uh, Twin Peaks Revival Show, and so I did subscribe, and it had some pretty good content on there. Uh, I had friends tell me that they were really interested in watching Showtime as well because of other shows on there, so it does have a, a good audience. Um, you know, not one that I was super thrilled about either, but it did seem like Showtime has a pretty strong following. So hopefully with that, um, either way, I'll, uh, if I have to subscribe to see it, I will. And if you guys, you know, probably too early, but if we hear anything about a DVD or a Blu-ray, that would be really cool too, because that's probably what I would end up doing. All right. See you all later. Yeah, those are good questions. William is actually referencing a kind of a question that we had in a previous episode where we were really a little perplexed on the Showtime announcement, and we weren't sure if Showtime had enough meat on their bones, but okay, they have Twin Peaks. That's a pretty good franchise. I know it's got a big following. I'm not a Twin Peaks guy. I know Kyle McLaughlin's in it. He's also in Confess Fletch, but okay, so maybe it's not the worst venue to go with Fletch. That's a good, actually, that's a very good uh, cross-reference there. But did you guys see the news that uh, Warner and Discovery are talking about just blowing HBO Max up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did hear that. That's crazy. Somehow, if, if Discovery does decide that HBO Max isn't something that they want anymore, imagine how much more important this Showtime streaming service is going to become. You know, it, to a degree. You know, it, it could you could see a lot of people jumping over to showtime with hbo max is no longer a thing yeah that's a great point william thanks for the call you and bob are making a case for showtime as not the worst option now that we kind of look at it from this perspective he asked a question about the dvd now i stopped buying dvds years ago i probably had 500 or more dvds in my collection now i don't even own a dvd player anymore so i'm not quite in touch with the dvd industry do movies that launch on streaming or on demand do they ever make it to dvds i'm not sure do you guys know i think that that does happen on occasion but i don't think that's a common thing yeah i mean but i still i would love to have it i mean like i went out and bought the matrix the new matrix on blu-ray right after it came out because i'm like a completist you know and i'm like well i've got yeah. the first three i've got to have the fourth one so it would be disappointing if i didn't have confess on blu-ray because then 
maybe there'll be extras maybe there'll be a director's commentary more maybe there'll be a retrospect on gregory mcdonald or something like that flesh and flesh lives are they on blu-ray or is it still just the uh the originals they are on blu-ray but again but nothing nothing again on there yeah there's a fletch and fletch lives combo dvd on blu-ray it might even be called fletch still alive i know i saw that recently i'm not sure if that's like an import dvd or that's um from the u.s but yeah they do have it the jane doe edition that's the only edition of fletch that has any extras on it yeah uh no cut scenes or anything like that but it's got the documentary and a couple other featurettes don't bother me i'm watching the terminator however dvds these days are not the only options for extra features a lot of times when you buy a movie on demand the perk of buying it is you get extra featurettes and behind the scenes and deleted stuff and outtakes things like that so hopefully confess i mean these days i would imagine no movie gets made without the behind the scenes being documented the cast being interviewed i hope that all happens on every movie these days so fingers crossed if we hear anything about a dvd we'll certainly let you know you know, that's a good question that if we get an opportunity to speak to Greg Matola, we can ask him about that as well. I'm actually messaging him right now to ask if they've done anything for Blue or if he has any idea. Let's jump to the next call. Thank you. Thank you, William. Yeah, that was great. Mike again. This is a question from the United Kingdom, London to be precise. New dead news desk of the celluloid portal. Question that I would have, given the confessed Fletch lines up the possibility of a franchise and sequel. There was a script written in the 80s for Fletch and the Man Who. Is that script still around? Are we able to read it? Will it be referenced? Will the series now go there? Fletch and the Man Who. An equally a script that I would like to see would be Fletch Save. With any of the work by Bill Warren. That would be my question. I like to think it's pretty deep. It's probably not. But anyway... Thanks for sending me a baseball cap. I'm going to love it. Anyway, signing out. Thank you very much. Ah, the Celluloid Sorceress from Twitter. Good to hear your voice. Big supporter of ours. Huge Fletch fan. Brings up a good question. Will we ever see those Fletch scripts that were written but never made into movies? Do they exist? Will we ever see them? Are they out there? I think at least to some degree that, yes, those Fletch scripts exist. I know Jason McDonald had talked previously about having the Kevin Smith Fletch One script. I'm sure if he has that, then there's a possibility that either him or David List still has access to some of those previous scripts, either the Bill Lawrence version, uh, again, the Kevin version, or the earlier Fletch and the Man Who version that was supposed to be the sequel um, after Fletch. So I'm sure they're out there somewhere because, believe me, I would love, and I think all of us would agree, to read those scripts um, and just see what their take is on it, particularly since all of those versions are based on books, and we would love to see what their take is on those books. Um, If there is a sequel, I think the natural choice would probably be Fletch's Fortune. It's the sequel after Confess Fletch, so I think that would probably be the natural one. And then if there was a third one, I assume it probably would be Fletch and the Man Who. If you haven't read Fletch and the Man Who or Fletch's Fortune, and maybe you've gotten your hand on Confess Fletch because of the movie coming out, yeah, I highly recommend reading them because they are easy reads. And I think they would be really good, um, you know, moving them over to film. Yeah. I mean, we'd love to have Andrew Bergman on the show and talk about the original Fletch script, but we'd have so many questions about that Fletch 2 script. And speaking of Fletch 2, I actually found promotional merchandise a shirt with a Fletch 2 logo on it. It's incredible. I've never seen it before. Don't know where this came from. Don't forget, the sequel was Fletch 2, then it became Fletch Saved, and then Fletch Lives. So that's pretty rare to have something that original in the process of the sequel. But back to what we're talking about, I wonder if the writer has any rights to the scripts that they write. I don't know. I think that once they pay for the script, it's owned by the studio and that's it. It's it's theirs forever. Just sitting in limbo, yeah. sitting in a storage yeah, unit That's somewhere. a shame too. I wonder if yeah. they have the ability to put it out there, to publish it in any way or, you know, 
Well, here's the thing. I know that there's an old version of an Indiana Jones script that was written by, um, oh, I know he directed one of the Harry Potter movies. I think he directed one of them. I can't remember. Anyway, he wrote a script for the fourth Indiana Jones that never was picked up. But if you do a, uh, a Google search for it, you can find it pretty much in, in its entirety. Huh. Um, so those scripts can be out there. So often people will take pieces of one script and use it in a new movie. Sure. And just, oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's been Frankenstein into something else, you know? One thing that I can tell you is from our interview with Jason McDonald, he said every single script, every single version that has come across his desk or David List's desk or Gregory McDonald's desk over the last 20 something years, they've all been scripts that could easily be Fletch movies. And he was pretty happy with all of them that, that he's, that he's read. That's great. And the sorceress is very active on Twitter. Yes. Thank you very much for your support. Great to have followers that also continue to spread the word of Fletch. Yeah. Big fan of Gregory McDonald as well, which is really, really nice to see. And calling in from over the pond. So that might get a couple extra points. <laughs> that never <Right>. gets old. <laughs> Let's go to the next voicemail. Let's see who's going to win this hat. Hello, guys. My name is Mark Delps from Denver, Colorado. And I've been a fan of Fletch for years. I've all the novels. And all I can say is I've read every single one of them. I think they're great. And Kind of borrow your cow for a second. My car just hit a water buffalo. That's my favorite line in the entire movie. Love you. I mean, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Freudian Uh-oh. slips, you can't take them back. We love you too. <laughs> We're not ashamed to admit it. And we love all the fans. And thank you so much for calling in. I mean, to, to have a fan that loves the movies. Loves the novels. Loves us. <laughs> and loves us. Yeah. We, I mean, it's just great. I mean, Mark, we love your body. We love everything about you. <laughs> this one's for you, buddy. Uh, I just got out of the shower. <laughs> yeah. Can I borrow your towel for a sec? My car just hit a water buffalo. <laughs> nice place you have here. <laughs> Mark, thanks so much for the call. Thank you, Mark. Something that we forgot to comment on since our last episode was the fact that we've hit 10,000 downloads. Yes. That's pretty significant. Yeah. If that's all you guys. Yes. Thank you. And just to think, something that we created on a whim a year ago has been listened to 10,000 times. Actually, now it's closer to 13,000 times. But I know we're not in the Joe Rogan numbers or anything like that, but that's pretty significant for a little Fletch podcast like us. Yeah. And by the way, we get zero any type of monetary benefits from this whatsoever yeah. we did we did come across a we did come across a free hat that's about all we've got and we're giving uh, that away like your gym how much in the red are we yeah. yeah just to get the podcast out there to you guys yeah it's, it's about 60 dollars a month mm-hmm. just to, just to have the subscription to do that let's take so. taking 60 dollars yeah. of baby food from <laughs> jim's you know baby's mouth think about that which is fine. <laughs> Which is fine. It's where the, she'll live, right? She'll be fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. All right. Let's get let's get right to the next voicemail. Hello, everybody. It's Fletch Cap. My name is Matthew Daniel. I'm from get this, Provo, Utah. Oh my oh. gosh! Greetings. I always enjoy Marvin Delma and Provo, and my license plate says. Fletch. I'm currently a Salt Lake City resident. I love Fletch more than anything. It's my favorite movie in the comedy genre. No question. I quote it often. And it's not just because I was born and raised in Provo, which is nothing like how it is depicted in the movie. Although it may as well be because quite frankly, that is incredible. <laughs> That's what they all say. But I just want to say I love the podcast. I love that you guys hit 10,000 downloads. It's pretty great. My own podcast hit that a while ago. Uh, it's pretty fantastic. I love that you guys have a podcast dedicated to Fletch. I cannot wait to hear how you feel about Confess Fletch. It's a movie that is far too long in the making. Keep it up. Matthew. Matthew, great call. <laughs> but that's awesome. That he, what, a, what a fan. You know, Provo, uh, Provo Utah. And, uh, you know, has the Fletch uh, 
clutch deal and everything. That's awesome, man. I, yeah. I, I know he is excited about this new movie. You can hear it in his voice. Yeah. Well, I mean, for your favorite movie to reference the, the town and state you live in. Mm-hmm. It's wedged in between Wyoming and Nevada. You've seen pictures. How, I mean, how can you get much better than that? I mean, of yeah, all the that's huge. of all the states for them to pick, because Provo, Utah is not the city and state from the book, right, Jake? Right, right, right. It's in Pennsylvania. Right. Remember, he's going back and forth to PA, supposedly. Right. So for the movie to just pick that out of the hat and you to be from there. Yeah. And it's your favorite movie. And this too, Matt, you know, Burton Gilliam is a good friend. I, I have one question for Matt is, have you been singing with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir lately? <laughs> <laughs> that was a great call. Provo, Utah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a huge fan, though. I mean, like, that really takes dedication. I mean, a lot of people get sports teams or a funny saying or something like that yeah. on your license place. But to actually have Fletch, that really says something. I love it. Mm-hmm. I Thanks. wonder how often Matt has been chased down by mean dogs, too. <laughs> <laughs> out there in prior that's a big deal in promo <laughs> that's so cool thank you matt hey laker jim jake bob hope you guys are doing well this is dan from detroit and uh just wanted to call and say absolutely love the podcast been all the episodes recently and now i'm waiting on some new ones um i just had a general question i know one of you had mentioned on one of the previous episodes some of the other actors considered for the role of flesh and I didn't know that Charles Grodin was one of them. And uh, I'm a, <laughs> I love Charles Grodin. Um, one of the funniest movies. Talk about another cult film, Clifford. Him and Martin Short. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. One of the funniest, weirdest movies I've ever seen. Um, just wanted to get your thoughts on what you think he would have done with the role. Um, you know, from the pros, cons, what you think might have worked, might not have worked. Ultimately, I think they did the right thing going with Chevy, but to hear your thoughts on what he might do with the role. All right, I gotta head out now for my urinalysis. Take care, guys. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love Absolutely it when they it. throw it. A little line in there. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. So Dan from Dan from Detroit. Well, first of all, I, I gotta imagine Dan being from Detroit. He has much like I have too longed for many years for an Axel Foley Fletch crossover movie. <laughs> and that that is a something that I think that if that ever happened, that would have been so cool to see where Fletch is actually working with a real police officer undercover. And, and really, there's a lot of distinctions to be, you know, how often does Axel Foley use fake aliases as well? As characters are very similar, plus the whole similarity with the soundtracks as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, Charles Grodin, I think, would have been a little too serious for the role. And you guys agree? I think he could have been a good Fletch. I don't think the movie would have been successful with him at, in the role. Listen, Charles Grodin's very funny. And he, he's, he, you saw him in Seems Like Old Times where he worked with Chevy as well. You kind of see the difference. Yeah, that's a funny movie. Yeah, the difference in the sense of humor is he's a little too serious. It is, if, if you appreciate how his comedy kind of plays off the fact that he is in crazy situations that, you know, I just don't think it would have been the right the right fit. I think Chevy was the perfect casting. But I don't think looks wise fletch has to be a good looking guy and i mean yeah i mean yeah. chevy when he was younger was a good looking guy i mean he was in pretty good shape and i just think that might have been too far removed from the role to go in that direction i think i agree he has the wit he has the humor i think that part is solid yeah but right. i just think from yeah again i hate to be shallow but i mean they went so far removed from it just when they picked chevy compared to the original book. So I think that would be even farther away from what the the book actually describes uh, Fletcher. Yeah, I just don't think he has a star power to carry the movie. But you know what? You, you mentioned too, playing off other people. I think he would have been a great, either a great Frank or a great Chief. Yeah. Or Gillette. Or, or Gillette, yeah. He, he could have played any of those three roles very well. Yeah, I could see yeah. him as Gillette, yeah. And hey, listen, we appreciate anybody that binges our podcast i mean to me (laughs) honestly me and jake look at the we look at the stats every day and when i see somebody well see the preview episode episode one episode two episode three nothing gets us more excited than seeing a new listener going through them one at a time and and to be honest i mean somebody that gives us god what is it maybe 25 hours 30 hours of podcast listening yeah Yeah. that's a hardcore fletch fan yeah because Fletch One, our first episode, has 
almost a thousand downloads itself. So yeah. that's there was a lot of sampling going on. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> And I remember the other day you texted me where you were saying, hey, someone's getting caught up on all the uh, Underhill episodes or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somebody put all the Underhills in one day. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's give uh, the next voicemail a listen. Thank you for your call. Yes, that was great. Hey, gang, this is Zach from Southern Utah calling. Southern Utah. Wanted to ask you guys who you think the best female opposite of Fletch is in the book. I know that there's a bunch of different options there, but wanted to get your opinion on that. Also, I want to win the swag. It looks baller. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, thank you so much for yeah, that. Yeah. From Utah. Utah. Absolutely. <laughs> but that is a good question that he brings up. The best female opposite of Fletch in the books. I think I'm most qualified to answer, and I think it's obviously Bobby. <laughs> Uh, it's because she's the only book character i know bobby didn't last very long yeah she didn't last very long although i think you know i mean bobby was really i think it really kind of um set fletch on a different course once he saw bobby die in the book yeah. i mean she basically yeah. i mean she died in his apartment um but for me i would probably say moxie you know, Moxie was around for a couple of books and, you know, they really, I think, connected with each other. They would always pretend when they saw each other that it was the first time meeting each other. And it was really neat. And I think they had a really good relationship in the couple of books that they were in. So for me, I would say probably Moxie. I'd have to agree. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't read all the books, but but the first name that kind of came to my mind when I heard the question was Freddie Arbonaut. Yes. Yeah. She's in a couple of the, so, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's in a couple of books and she also is a pretty good adversary to Fletch. She is. She's a good foil. Yeah. She gives him a run for his money. She's a reporter as well. It kind of threw herself at him in one of the books. That's a good, you know, that's good too. Yeah. She was in a couple of books too. And um, one thing was, yeah, she didn't take any of his shit at all. I yeah. mean, he would really press her hard and he would, um, I think he really respected her and she would press back. So that's a good one too. For what you're describing, that would be very uh, apropos to a, 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 a female character in 2022, you know, mm -hmm. that I could see how they could really take somebody like that and really, you know, push hard on uh, developing somebody mm -hmm. like that in, the, in a new movie. Hopefully if we get those two. Which, which book was, which book was that from? She was in Fletch's fortune and then showed up again okay. in Fletch and the man who was when and Fletch and the man who uh, Fletch is a press reporter for a candidate, a presidential candidate. So he's like the press secretary, you know, and um, he's riding with a bunch of reporters on a bus during the book as he campaigns this nominee and Freddie's in there. And Freddie, he meets Freddie at um, the journalism convention in Fletch's Fortune. And that would be the, again, Fortune and, and the Man Who would be, the, I would say, the next two movies if they do them. So, again, maybe we would see Freddy in, in those two books or in those two movies. Jay, can I ask you an off-topic question, but kind of while we're on it, why is he the Man Who? The Man Who would be president, I think. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, the candidate. He's an interesting character, too, because there's so much going on with the candidate and I don't want to spoil it since you're going through it, but with his wife and, you know, and, and his children. So he's a very complicated character as well. And is actually, I think really gains Fletch's respect, I think by the, uh, by the end of the book. Um, I think he's just kind of thrown into a situation in the beginning with a friend of his that he was in the military with that let him, you know, basically asked him to take over this position. But I think by the end of the book, he actually really comes to respect the, uh, the candidate. Hey guys, this is David from New Mexico. Um, just want to cut a question about the books, thinking about reading the Fletch series and uh, no disrespect to uh, Laker Jim and Bob, but this question is for Jake. Jake, what order would you recommend reading the books? I know you can read them either in order of timeline or in order they were written, but I want to know your opinion of what order you suggest I should read it, which is the best way to read it. Thank you, guys. Love the show. David, no disrespect at all. Jake, the floor is yours. <laughs> you know, that's a great question, and um, we've had that question before. I've been asked that question a lot, and 
again, I go back and forth, but I think I finally settled on just the overall arc of the character. And I think you probably would start from the beginning, although he didn't write them in order. We know that he wrote them out of order, but just to see kind of a, a nice fun arc of where Fletch began and Fletch won all the way through to Son of Fletch and Fletch Reflected. So let's go Fletch one, Fletch two, Fletch and the Widow Bradley, Fletch, then to Brazil for Carioca Fletch, then to Boston for Confess. And then after Confess, we went to the plantation for Fletch's Fortune and the Journalism Convention, then to South Florida to Key West for Fletch's Moxie. And then finally, Fletch and the Man Who. And then again, the Son of Fletch books, Son of Fletch and Fletch Reflect. Now, Jake, I have a question. And I guess the only way I can kind of compare this question would be like Star Wars, which was filmed out of order of the way it was written. The middle was filmed first, then the beginning, then the end. Now, if you were to watch Star Wars the way you are suggesting to read the books, You'd ruin a lot of the surprises of Star Wars. You'd ruin the Darth Vader reveal as Luke's father if you were to watch it from one on. Does anything like that happen in Fletch where you'd ruin a couple creative surprises that the author came up with writing it the way he did? Not too much. I mean, like there definitely is some callbacks that you figure out, like um, you find a little bit more when you read Fletch, the original, and then when you go back and you figure out a little bit more about, say, like Austin Chambers, uh, you find out where he was when you read them out of order, or when you read them in the order they were written, you find out like, oh, so Austin and Fletch were friends. Obviously, they were in the military together, but oh, they were they were friends, you know, from the very beginning uh, during Fletch one, which was kind of neat. Um, so. Again, there's two different camps where you could do that, but I think if you just want to see a nice over arc of the character, I would start at Fletch one and, and go all the way to the end. Any weird continuity that you can think of that doesn't match up with the books being written the way they were? The only thing that I thought is a little bit different is that um, if you go back and read like Fletch one and Fletch two, this is when Fletch is in L.A. He's learning to become a reporter and he's he's establishing this relationship with Frank. And Frank seems like he has more of a relationship in Frank. But because in Fletch, too, in the beginning, when he's getting married, he actually comes to his wedding um, at the beginning of Fletch, too, when when he marries um, when he marries Barbara. But then when you read Fletch which is the fourth book, it almost seems like that relationship has been rewound a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it, it isn't as progressive as it seems like it should have been since Frank was already in Fletch, Fletch one, Fletch two, and in Fletch and the widow Bradley. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get it. Sort of a close friend early on and then becomes like his complete nemesis kind of like it's more of his relationship with Frank in the movie in the in the later books. Yes, yes. It seems like that relationship is a little bit more established in those three prequel books compared to by the time you get to the first book that obviously he wrote later um, to kind of fill in his early, you know, his early life. Great call. Good question. That was David from New Mexico. We actually get a lot of downloads from New Mexico. Isn't that funny? A lot of fans there. Yeah. You know, and it's a good question because we get asked it a lot, like you mentioned. Yes. So it's great to finally be able to cover it on the show. Yes. Okay, let's see who's next. Hey, guys. Mark from Chicago. Love the show. One game I'd love to play is Mount Rushmore. Jake, I would love to hear your Mount Rushmore Fletch books. Think about your Mount Rushmore of Fletch movie characters, Fletch lives and Fletch. And Lake Jim, I'd love to know your overall Mount Rushmore of the world of Fletch. And to me, you guys belong up there on the Mount Rushmore. Thanks for everything you guys do. That's actually a great question. Wow. 
Very well thought out, especially the end part. Uh, Mount Rushmore is something we do all the time. We do it with wrestlers. We do it with different TV shows or musicians and things like that. Who wants to go first? I'll go. But I'll go first. Okay. Um, now the now Mount Rushmore is four or five present. There's four. Four present. There's okay. four. So it's four. Okay, yeah. so it's four. yeah. Okay, so my book Mount Rushmore would be Fletch. Okay. Confess Fletch. Fletch and the Man Who. Big, big, big money riding out in this mm. Abraham Lincoln spot. And Fletch, yeah, Fletch's fortune. Fletch's fortune. Okay. Those are my those are my four favorites. Okay. Fletch, confess. No karaoke. No. <laughs> Fletch's fortune and a Fletch and the Man Who. So those are my four favorite books. Okay. Now, Bob, the Mount Rushmore of Fletch movie characters. And now he did mention you can, you can do you can oh, Fletch man. lives characters. Yeah, yeah. Well, so. Look, I, it. I'll be honest. I, I've done, I've been doing this for years, and I I have five Mount Rushmores of varying topics, and then the real one I have. So I'm going to give you I'm going to give you them quick. Okay, the first one is the ladies of Fletch. In the George Washington spot, I have Peggy Lee Zorba, of course. <laughs> um, followed by Gail, Becky, and of course Larry in the honor of Abe Lincoln spot. Okay. Okay. I think we could all agree on those. Sure. Those, um, yeah. Um, the next one I have is it's it's Fletch aliases on Mount true. Rushmore. You really were prepared um, for this question tough. somehow. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> uh, so so in the Abraham Lincoln, you got to have a good forehead. So I have Baba Arum first, of course, followed right by G. Gordon Liddy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah. Claude Henry Smoot in the Roosevelt spot because of the glasses, <laughs> and uh, Elmer Fudd Gantry on the end. Um. <laughs> I have, uh, I, and I have, I have uh, what I call, what I like to call friends of Fletch. Oh yeah, this is great. Will you finish the fucking joke already? All right, but what is, what, but answer his question. What is the overall Fletch Mount Rushmore for the movies? Give it to us, the yep. top four okay. across the so, board. So here we go. It's probably the aliases is, is the one most people would agree is the way to go, but I go a different route. I go with uh, what I call Beach Rushmore. And it's Fletch, Fat Sam, Creasy, and Gup. Wow. Well, sure. Yeah. But I think this guy's just asking for overall characters. It's yeah, the, so if you're going to do four best characters in, in the movies. The four best. Yes. Fletch, Larry, Frank, Gillette. I, I don't know. I think as far as longevity, I would, I would almost put Underhill in there instead of Gillette. Yeah. Mm. Really That's why I have like six of these damn things going, <laughs> because I can't decide. I think I you would, have to go alias. I think you have to go aliases because really it's about the Fletch characters. Yeah, I would but probably yeah. go Fletch, Stanwick, Frank, Underhill. Underhill is the interchangeable. You know, I think you have to have those three: Fletch, Stanwick, and Frank. And then your fourth one is really dealer's choice. Yeah, it could be Gail. It could be yeah. maybe Larry. Larry. You know, maybe, maybe. Maybe Fat maybe Sam. Underhill. Maybe Fat Sam, maybe the Chief. Yeah. And what did, you know, what, did he, what did he ask me? He asked me for overall Fletch. Yes. <laughs> overall Fletch. So you're, right, you're so, talking about, I think from, from what I get, it's the Fletch universe, right? Yes. So, I mean, without question, Gregor McDonald is, is one of the four. Um, Absolutely. Chevy Chase is one of the four. Um, you can make a case for Peter Douglas being one of the four. You can make a case for Andrew Bergman being one of the four. What about Michael Ritchie? He sure, certainly can make a case. He directed both movies. And then when do you bring the new one in? Is John Hamm. Well, okay, so there it is. We love the movie. John Hamm is one of the four. I mean, another a person to play Fletch has to be in the Mount Rushmore Fletch, right? Right. Okay, so here's my four. Chevy, Gregory McDonald, John Hamm, and Harold Faltermeyer. I think you nailed it. And I like that you brought up Peter Douglas, because without Peter Douglas... Who knows where we? That guy was relentless. That guy would not take no for an answer. That he wanted this made into a movie. Yeah, great question. Really great question. Lot, lot to think about there. Hmm. I'm gonna have to Mm -hmm. think about that, and maybe we'll come back to it another another time. Well, I think that the obvious answer is the fourth spot goes to a friend of the show, Burton Gilliam with Bud. (laughs) That's funny. And I think the and the guy that was very kind of the guy to also say that he would put us up there. Um, you know, certainly we don't, we don't belong <laughs> up there, but thank you for for saying that. 
Hey guys, this is Kara from New York. Um, I was listening to uh, one of your podcasts uh, with a narrator, the book narrator, uh, Dan John Miller, and he had mentioned that he's given no direction for the voices that he uses when reading the books. If any of you caught uh, Marcia Get Harden on the talk a few weeks ago, she does the Countess voice from the movie, and it's the same voice Dan John Miller uses. So I wonder if she listened to the audio for inspiration, just thought that was interesting. Love the show, guys. You know what? I actually have that clip. So why don't we pull up a clip from Dan John Miller's voice of the Countess, and then we'll play the clip of Marcia Gay Harden on the talk doing the Countess as well. Let's take a listen. Okay. Here's Dan John Miller. Now, Flesh, I am not going to have any of your double talk in English. I want the truth. Absolutely. What are you drinking? Campari and soda. Still watching your figure, huh? Might as well. Everyone else is. Oh, Flesh, you will help me. I will? You have to help me. I do? Meant he's dead. I'm an early widow with nothing, nothing. I married Menti and his paintings. They are my paintings. Menti would want me to have them. I know this. Many times he spoke of our paintings. And here's Marcia Gay Harden. I play an Italian contessa, and they really wanted to hire an Italian to come do it, but it was COVID, so they couldn't get an Italian woman to come over, an actress to come over. So Greg called me and said, will I do it? And I was like, they're going to kill me. I'm not allowed to play Italian. And they just do it. So every day I was doing Italian with this woman. She was calling me from Italy, and I was doing this, and it was Italian, yeah. Italian all the time. But So then when I got to set, it was like, John M., why you don't show me your muscles? It's for me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> it's very it's very similar it, it listen it's completely possible she read the book and also listened to the audio at the same time that could just be an italian countess voice that's the way you do the accent mm-hmm. you know it's also possible that the, the director heard the audio book and said hey this is how you need to you know voice the character to her to the actress i guess that's possible yeah, it, was, yeah. it was interesting that she said that they they really wanted an Italian woman. But Matola must be really high on her, you know? He really, really wanted her. Yeah. This is a real chicken before the egg kind of question, you know? Who who heard what voice and how did it adapt? Yeah. I have a feeling it's probably, I mean, she's a well-trained actress. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. she's been around a long time and she's been great in a lot of things. She's a very good actress. I would imagine that, hey, this is an a, Italian countess, go. And she probably right. just could pick it up like that. But it is funny how similar they do sound. Good connection. Great yeah. call. That was that was really fun to hear. Okay, what do we got next? Hey, guys, this is Scott. And I want to know what character you would choose to cameo in one of the upcoming Fletch films. I thought that would be a fun thing for you guys to discuss. Look forward to hearing it. Good question, Scott. I've never thought of that before, actually. Um, if I had to pick somebody to bring back as a cameo. Now, we don't have a lot of people alive. To be perfectly honest. Yeah. And yeah. I guess I would bring back Fat Sam. I would bring back George Went, I think, in a cameo. My pleasure, brother. I think for me, it would be fun to see Fletch run into Gillette somewhere. I agree. Good call. You I know, of that. you know, maybe he's he's um, just down on his luck still chasing ambulances or something like that. But now he's, you know, maybe in Boston. Oh, that would be. And, uh, you know, he turns the corner and and there's Gillette. That would be funny. Yeah, Bob, who who would you bring back? There's so many scenarios where he he winds up in jail. (laughs) Oh, no, no. I I see where you're going. I mean, how do you not have been? How do you not have been over? Take your pants off. That would actually be pretty funny. That would be great. If if Randall Tech Scott turned around. (laughs) You know, you never know. <laughs> okay, just a few calls left. Hey, Fletchcast. This is Gary from the Catskills in New York. I just want to tell you I love the show. I didn't know what a podcast was before you guys, but I don't miss an episode. Tomorrow I turn 77 years old. I love Fletch just as much as you guys. My question, what characters, you know, besides Fletch, are your favorite to cite characters? Uh absolutely love the podcast and i listen to old episodes all the time sometimes i pick up new stuff that i didn't hear previously what you guys do honestly for the world of fletch is 
can be, can't be measured. So uh, I look forward to hearing the show and hope you guys like the question. One last thing, if I could just give a shout out to my friend Keith. Uh, we're big Fletch fans. We grew up watching it together as young men, and uh, we listen to the podcast, actually, and we discuss it afterwards. We call each other, and we have a great laugh. Talk to you guys soon. Gary, happy birthday, 77 years old. Wow. Longtime Fletch fan. So good to hear that. You're definitely bucking for call of the night. So favorite characters can't be Fletch. Can be in the movies or the books. Bob, who would you? Who is your favorite character outside of Fletch? Outside of Fletch, um, though my heart wants to go with Bud because he has always been just one of the. It's that scene that makes me so happy. I I got to go with Larry. Larry is the best friend Fletch could ever have. That honestly that answer surprised me. Yeah, yeah, it surprises myself. There's look, I mean Jesus. There's a hundred characters I could choose, but. It, that's Fletch's right hand person, you know, and there is no Fletch without Larry. I feel in in in, in the world of, of Fletch and writing, you know, writing his paper and writing his column and everything, there's no Fletch without Larry. I feel like Larry does so much for Fletch, and you gotta, in my opinion, you gotta have Larry. My hero. Well, I'm gonna stick in. The, I'm gonna stay in the newsroom. And honestly, when I thought about that question, when I was listening to the question, my first thought was Frank. I really love the Frank character. Uh, Frank goes from he goes from zero to a hundred in every em- emotion in between. Proud of Fletch to angry of Fletch to firing Fletch to proud of Fletch. I'm gonna go with Frank. Richard Libertini to me, he killed it. I love that character. Plus, Slattery picked up the ball and ran with it. He absolutely killed it and confessed. And I can't wait to see what he does with the character in Fortune. Uh, so yeah, Frank's my answer. He has so many. So many antagonists. I honestly thought you were going to go like Jimmy Lee Farnsworth or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, though, that I was I immediately thought of Frank, too. I mean, I hate to just borrow against, but that's a huge part of his life is the newspaper. And without yeah. that foil, that is Frank. And you're you're right. I mean, Richard Libertini was just so perfect for that role. And they played played off each other so well and they had great chemistry absolutely and every scene was great every scene that they did together was great i use some new deodorant you know he has respect for fletch he's just annoyed with him you know he's just like he's frustrated with him i actually liked i love the groveling frank too he's yeah. like fletch i got nervous you know like he's like yeah. you know, forgive me fletch. Forgive yeah me, yeah man. got a little yeah. a-frame yeah. up at arrowhead <laughs> go up there for a while <laughs> uh, so, Gary, again, great call. If we ever do a Fletchcast after show, you and your buddy Keith can host it. Oh, yeah. I promise you that. Okay, we got one last call, and then we're going to find out who's going to win this Confess Fletch hat. Uh, Mr. Laker, Jim Swartho. Uh, my name is Igor Stravinsky. I'm calling about a Fletch hat that I would like to win. I was looking at Instagram and overheard some people talking about a Fletch hat, and $3 million sounded like a good price to me. <laughs> No way. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, is that right? Oh, well, in that case, I've been very misinformed. Excuse you? Yes, well, uh, I would still love to listen to your podcast anyway. What's a good time for the next episode? First thing in the morning, tomorrow. Bye. Hey, guys, this is Tim from Edina, Minnesota. Just wanted to call and let you know, keep up the great work. Uh, I hope this helps me win one of your hats. Uh, I tell you what, why don't you keep 10 hats for yourself? Go out and get a nice piece of that. Well, um, I got a deadline to make. So it's uh, Jim with the J. Thanks, gentlemen. Take care. Jesus. <laughs> How many points did Tim hit there? And he had an audio clip in the middle of it. He did the voice. He did it in one take. That's the only voicemail I have from him. And the Mr. Potato wow. Head inserts. I mean, I hope people got that reference because that that, I got that gave me chills. That gave me chills. For those of you that didn't get that reference, when uh, when he's on the phone doing the, <laughs> the Igor Stravinsky voice uh, with Jim Swarthow, <laughs> the desk clerk is listening to a Mr. Potato Head commercial. <laughs> I love how he says, keep 10 hats for yourself and go out and get a nice piece of ass. Tim, uh, my unbelievable. I mean... Oh, God. Ah, Talk about the last call just swooping in on this contest. I mean, 
I guess picking the winner is just a formality at this <clears throat> point. Um, but uh, I would like to thank everyone that called. And honestly, the very first call, the one that called in about recording the movie on audio and listening to it on cassette in his car, that one had it for me all the way through. It was the first one. And I was like, ooh, this one's going to be hard to beat. And everyone after it, I loved, I definitely loved. But that one, he- that one held through. What were you thinking through throughout the uh, voicemails? Yeah, I thought it was either going to be the call from Houston about the guy who recorded the audio, or I really like the UK call just because it yes. was great, you know, to hear from country. people from yeah, was just across nice. the across the ocean. But that one, uh, I- I'm sorry, but that one, there's no comparison. The production value, I laughed my ass off. <laughs> And I think probably our listeners would agree that that is the clear winner. Would you? Yeah. Think that? I agree. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think that I think hands down. And Bob just, Bob actually, we just lost Bob at the very end of that call, mm-hmm. but he just texted me that that was the greatest call he's ever heard. And that was who he's voting for. So it's a sweep. I mean, unbelievable, Tim. He, and he was from Minnesota? Yeah. Um, he nailed the Igor Stravinsky voice too. Voice, I mean, right. he, he nailed it. Oh, oh, oh Jay, I very, I heard that. very misinformed. <laughs> Tim, the hat is yours. Enjoy it. Oh. Uh, please send me your dress. But you know what I'm going to do, Jake? Yeah. Everybody that called, I want to send them something for, uh, for participating in this contest. We really appreciate it. All the calls were great. Honestly, every single call I love to death. Thank you so much, guys. Tim, the hat is yours. Everybody else, reach out to us at imfletchcast at gmail.com. Send us your address, and we're going to get something in the mail to you guys right away. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for calling. I know it's you know, just taking a minute out of your day. It's really, really appreciated. And, uh, yeah, something will be in the mail. Uh, you didn't lose again this time. <laughs> Nobody lost today yeah, with absolutely. this episode. Uh, <laughs> Such great stuff, Fletch fans. Thank you so much for Bob, Jake. I'm Laker Jim. We'll talk to you soon. See ya. See ya. I kind of want to listen to that last call again. Man, that was so funny.